Hey Facebook friends and YouTube, this video will be about children. So I'm gonna start this video with a prayer. Dear God, I pray that this video would be anointed and I pray that I would say whatever you would want me to say and what you would want the world to know and feel about children. Help us with this very important topic because children are our future and it is our job as adults to protect the safety of children. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so if you guys have seen my testimony video, you know that I was sexually abused as a child um, a few times. So it's always been my passion and my heart to protect children and make sure that they have a good childhood because I did not have a perfect childhood. I had mostly a fun childhood, but there were some hard times. Okay, Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he or she should go. Even when they are old, they will not depart from it. And that is very true. Even if you take your kid to church at least a little bit, they will most likely go to church then later as an adult. Um, and as far as like, <clears throat> even when they are old, they will not depart from it. Of course, there can be a little bit of departing, but I think that promise is a promise that they will always come back. You know, if you, if you train them up in the correct way. Of course, that doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily talking about church. That's just saying train up a child in the way he should go. Like just make sure that they make good decisions and make wise choices. And obviously that should be every parent's goal, regardless of their religion or faith. All right. Just to train their kid to make good choices. Ephesians 6, 4, this is an important verse. Fathers or mothers, do not provoke your children to wrath or anger but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So there's a difference between discipline and like being overly harsh, obviously. Like if you are overly harsh, your child will just grow to resent you and will be wrathful and angry. So, you know, be limited on your number of spankings. And obviously for sure, if you're going to discipline, don't ever hit a kid anywhere besides just a spanking on the butt. And I use my hand, but I used to spank my oldest daughter a lot, probably mainly when she was three, but I don't spank her much now. She's five. Now I just say, do you want a spanking? And she says no and stops doing whatever she's doing. But my younger child, I probably only spanked her two times because um, just me even sounding cross with her makes her stop and get really sad. So she's definitely a lot more sensitive. Um, so, you know, depending on the child will determine the level of discipline that they need because some children are more have more strong personalities and then some have weaker personalities, you know, so but it's all good. So make sure that your discipline is tailored to your child. Um Psalm 127 3 through 5. This is a good verse. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies at the gates. So there's an argument for having lots of children or a verse supporting that. Um, and yes, that is good. I heard a good video from John Piper, though. He was saying how now with the Great Commission, Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. So maybe that kind of amends that concept of having lots of kids and the whole be fruitful and multiply thing because now we are called to have spiritual children more so than physical children <clears throat> and that I think now is more important to God. So that's why it can be good to limit your family to like two kids and then focus on making disciples of all people, you know, because yeah, it's, uh, that's like, you know, building treasures in heaven is creating spiritual children like I like to think that these videos are hopefully doing that making disciples <clears throat> um but you know I think everybody should at least have two kids and then we should have that mindset about them that children are a heritage from the Lord and a reward so you know people should be excited about kids there's such a culture now and I think the whole abortion and homosexuality thing what those are saying is that people now don't want kids or don't value kids. And I think that's why, well, obviously that's why women have abortions because they don't want to have the kid. And then guys, I think, are homosexual or women are lesbian because they don't want to have kids. And I think it might be because we all had like hard childhoods. 
so then that prevented people from wanting to have kids. I know for a long time I actually didn't really want to have kids because I had a hard childhood. And I was like, I don't know how I would handle that as a parent if my kid, you know, something happened to them or they got sexually abused or they broke an arm or they died, God forbid, you know, something like that. So I was just like, that would be so hard. So anyways, but overall, you know, we should see the positives, focus on the positives rather than the negatives, believe the best rather than assume the worst, you know, believe that your, ch your children will be safe and that it will be a good experience <laughs> to be a parent rather than assume the worst that, you know, something horrible is going to happen. So, you know, if you know anyone who's thinking about having kids, encourage them that they should and that overall it's a good thing and encourage them to get their kids in church or at least play sermons at home that they can hear and hopefully they understand part of it and worship music, Hillsong. Okay. Um, or elevation worship. So I'm 127.3. Be, uh, I already read that one. Okay. Matthew 18.10. Jesus said, See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Now that's really interesting because it's like, well, how can their angels be in heaven but then still be with them? I'm not entirely sure. But... um. <clears throat> But anyway, so Jesus was saying, you know, do not despise children, which that was very common in biblical times that I guess people would despise children or just not really value them, you know, which I guess is kind of understandable because it's not like a kid can work and make money or, I mean, some kids can do chores. My daughter was trying to help me unload the dishwasher the other night. It was really cute. <laughs> but anyway, so I guess that's why people can't despise children because they're so like, you know. Um, they take more than they give, but you know, it's okay because that's just part of being a parent. Um, Proverbs 17, six, grandchildren are the crown of the aged and the glory of children is their fathers. I'm not entirely sure what that means. The glory of children is their fathers. So children really look up to their fathers, which is true. For sure. And grandchildren are the crown of the aged. So if you have grandchildren, it feels like you have a crown. Hopefully. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Isaiah fifty four thirteen. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Woo woo. Mark ten thirteen. Uh, they were bringing children to him, Jesus, that he might touch them. And, but the disciples rebukes them. But Jesus saw it. He was indignant and angry and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Aww. So we all know from that passage that Jesus loved children, that he valued children, <clears throat> which was very important. Um, because in that time, people didn't value children as much as they should have. So Jesus, um, made sure that he made this statement. I think, you know, he knew that it was important. And whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child, that I think means just the simplicity, you know, like we have, we, sometimes we make it too complicated and we overthink things. I mean, about faith and religion and everything in life as adults, and we need to just keep it simple. Like my dad used to always say, KISS stands for keep it simple, stupid, which is true. Um, we do have to keep it simple. And children keep things simple, obviously. Like my five-year-old is always singing, uh, Jesus, God, Jesus, God. And it's really cute. And I think that's like just her way of making a worship song, but keeping it simple. Okay, this verse is kind of funny. John 16, 21. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow. Yes, because, because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. On the contrary, actually, women do remember it. <laughs> but yeah, so, well, that's why women have abortion because they're scared of labor. 
but I just want to say to anyone out there, if you haven't had a baby, don't worry, you will be okay. Uh, I recommend getting an IV and getting like a little bit of a pain med in that and then you don't feel a whole lot. That really helps a lot. But I would recommend not getting an epidural because that can cause you permanent spinal damage. I've heard that some people that's happened. <sighs> Proverbs 2011, even a child makes himself known by his acts by whether his conduct is pure and upright. Yeah. Ephesians 6, 1, children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor your mother and father that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Now, an exception to that verse is if your father is a pedophile like mine, but either, either way, hopefully you have at least one parent that you can honor. So, yes, make sure that you honor your parents. And part of that is just, you know, not talking bad about them, obviously respecting them when you're there with them. You know, you should never yell. Obviously, you should never, ever yell at your parents. And I don't think I've ever yelled at my mom. So, praise God. <laughs> Anyways, may God bless you all. I pray that that helped you. And have a great day.